Hello, welcome to Adapt and Close. Um, today, I just want to do a quick overview of uh, abdominal aortic aneurysm, a topic that they like asking because um, we find it in a lot of people. It is a very important topic. Of course, everything in class is very important, but there's certain things you, you have to know because our older men and women are living younger and aortic aneurysm is very common. So quick facts and let's get to it quickly. Um, so um, AAA is a, that's what some people call it, aortic, uh, abdominal aortic aneurysm. Um, it's a peripheral vascular disease. So one thing you have to know is a peripheral vascular disease. The vascular means at arterial origin, okay? So peripheral vascular disease that affects um, abdominal aorta. And so this is what it looks like. So this is your heart like that. It come like that. Um, and it has three branches uh, from the aorta. And the aorta start coming down like that. So this is the thoracic portion of it. And then when you get to the diaphragm, the stomach, A of the abdominal wall, it comes, it comes down. And so this is now in the abdomen. And you have this, this is the aneurysm. And it branches into individual um, branches. This is the iliacs, we call it. This is the aortic, abdominal aortic aneurysm. Um, and this is the thoracic. The aneurysm, all what it means is sac. So this is a sac. And is this the bulging of the the um, the vascular portion, uh, both all the layers, the three layers of the the vessels bulges out, um, and it create an area where there is turbulent flow. So blood coming down, um, I will use blue blood coming down like that is try to go down, but when you get to the the sac, it go in different direction, all direction or direction, then it, before you go down here. Because of that, there is something we call turbulent flow. There is turbulent flow. So there's always a pressure on the wall um, and that can create a problem um, for the patient. Um, so it's one of the um, aneurysm that is very important and it's in the abdomen. So that's where usually um, they like to uh, test um, students about it. And the location is very classic. If it's, this is your umbilicus, so if this is the umbilicus here like that, it's on the left side of it. So it's on the left side of the umbilicus. So you can hear it, you can feel it. Um, so your questions, when they're asking you about abdominal um, aneurysm, they're referring to here, just write it umbilicus. So watch those are. Uh, um, information in your question when they try to ask you for that. It's very, very important. Um, so this is the normal structure of the aneurysm. Um, the risk factors, um, basically, is a peripheral vascular disease. So it's a peripheral vascular disease. Therefore, you should expect the risk factors to be any peripheral vascular disease. So risk factors. Like I say all the time, whenever you hear risk factors, think about SATA. So this is what they can ask you on your SATA questions, okay? Just think about it. That's all what it is. So risk factors, who can get uh, aneurysm? It's like any other peripheral vascular disease. And therefore, hypertension, number one, okay? And all the symptoms that will give you peripheral artery disease, smoking. It's not good. It's not good on the vessel. Um, it causes vessel constriction. Diabetes make the vessels not pliable. Um, and then hyperlipidemia, all of them, they are risk factors. It causes a sclerosis and a thickening and the blood flow and then the aneurysm start forming in it. Um, of course, family history. If this is in your family, yeah, you get it. And then Age is also a problem. And the one that is very sad is 
male. So if you are a man, good luck with that. So you high risk of that. This, 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 that, and that. These four, hypertension, smoking, diabetes, epilipidemia, and non modifying no, they are modifying risk factors. Sorry, they are modifying. So they they modifying. So you can modify it. Modifying risk factors. You can modify it. So you can stop smoking. That will prevent that. But family history, age, and male sex are non-modifying. Non-modifying risk factors. You have no choice. Um, if it's in a family where yeah, you are at risk of dying. Your age, as you get young, older, and this is 65 years old. If you're more than 65, yes, and you are in male sex. So this is the risk factors. Now, how would they present? Most people, like I, I, I draw, um, don't have symptoms. So this is the belly button, and the aneurysm is on the, you go like that, so it's on the left side um, of the um, you can hear it on the left side here. So it's on this side. So most people, okay, um, with no issue, you hear a brewery. A brewery is the, the turbulent flow on the left side of the umbilicus. So if they give you a question, somebody have a brewery, felt a brewery in the left side of the umbilicus with the stethoscope, they're talking about AAA. Or they will say palpable, okay, palpable abdominal mass. Palpable abdominal mass at the same place, just on the left of the umbilicus. Yes, that's what they're referring to. So this is how on the physical exams, this is what you feel. So growing and, and a palpable mass, basically. Most of them, some are asymptomatic, but some of them are symptomatic. So the the treat we do surgery on them if they're greater than six centimeters and above. So six centimeters and above, all the patient has symptoms. So what does that mean? So these are two things: either you have symptoms, or it's about six centimeters. Um, a, a size in size, so it's like a little bit bigger. The aneurysm is about six centimeters, so from here to here, six centimeter diameter. Then we got to do surgery about it. Okay, how would they present if they rupture? Usually, if they're symptomatic, you just feel your brewery and a palpable mass. So, if they tell you a patient a palpable mass, a brewery, you should pay attention to that. But the one they usually ask you is a priority patient, patient that you have to select who do you see first. And that is the presentation of rapture. So they usually will rapture. And how would they set it in your exams? Well, they will tell you um, abdominal mass, palpable abdominal mass, and the umbilicus, left of the umbilicus, okay, with plus back pain. So radiating back pain and it's acute onset. So acute abdominal pain uh, or palpable mass um, with pain radiating towards the back. The other two, number two is pulsatile. Something is pulsating, that's a vessel. Okay, pulsatile mass with back pain. Okay, or the third one, you hear abdominal brewery with back pain. You see how they can ask you so many ways. So, porcita abdominal mass with back pain, palpable abdominal mass with back pain, ab uh, abdominal brewery with back pain. What is the problem? Pain. This pain, if you watch my video on prioritization, this is pain that is going to cost life. And the P, the pain on my prioritization is three. I, uh, life, limb, eyesight. 
So they have pain that is going to cause their life. So this pain is not just a regular back pain. It's a pain of hemorrhage. So the hemorrhaging. So we got to see this patient. It's a priority patient. You got to see them first. So these are the three things you can see. Abdominal mass or palpable mass, abdominal brewery, plus back pain. You got to see them. You got to see this patient quickly. Uh, you don't have time. That's your priority patient right there. Okay? And so that's the presentation. So how do you repair it? We got to fix it. How do you fix it? There is a open, uh, I made a mistake, open and endovascular repair. That means that you have to make incision one, the other one you don't make incision. So we talk about open first. Open re repair. That means you're going through the abdomen. So if this is the person, okay, if they, this is the person, up then, and this is the umbilicals, you have incision here. You make incision from here, here, big incision. So they have incision in the abdomen. So they have what? Incision in the abdomen to get into the aneurysm. So this is the aneurysm. This is what it look like. You see the bulging? They go there to, so incision on the abdomen. And then they repair it. When they repair, they put this graft. We call it graft. I put a G there. They put a graft, graft inside the sac. You see, they open the sac and they put the sac and they connect it. They don't remove the sac. They connect it to the normal. So this is the normal shape of the artery instead of the big one here. So they put it in, in line to what it's supposed to be. Okay. Then they close the abdomen. That's all. That is the open. You don't need to know details. Just know that there's incision in the abdomen, it's repair, and they put a graft. Okay. The second one is endovascular. Endovascular, the same patient. Okay. And the bell button here. And you see the vessel on the diagram. So the vessel come, you have the aneurysm here, aneurysm here, go down, and you go to the groin. Okay, so what is happening in endovascular, whenever you hear endovascular, these also apply to cardiac, I'm trying to branch it and put things together. For cardiac catheterization is the same thing, idea. So basically, they make incision in the groin and then they, they put a wire through the groin and they go into the aneurysm and they fix it. They put a stent here and fix it. That's all. No incision. So there is no abdominal incision anywhere. They go into the groin. Small, small, tiny incision. Okay. Um, and they're done. They use some wires, catheter to fix it, and they're done. The thing is. This is where they confuse you with. So now, after surgery, whatever, is that open? They are all form of surgery, endovascular. What do you do? So post-op, you got to take care of the patient. The key things you have to check, number one, hemorrhage. So hemorrhage, hemorrhage, hemorrhage. But how would you know that? You have to look for certain things. They won't tell you. Post up, their heart rate goes up. Their blood pressure go down. Urine output go down. Change in mental status. These are all B sharp issue. Shock. So you're looking for shock. Okay? You're looking for shock. So you're looking for hemorrhage. Um in the open repair, how do you see it? Where they're going to bleed into their back, so they have back pain again. That's not good. They're going to bleed into the abdomen, so they will have periumbilical ecchymosis. That's what we call curling sign. Watch it out. 
then they will have they will bleed into their back that is the flank area so you they have flank ecchymosis flank ecchymosis and this is what what we call gray tenor syndrome okay so that's how they bleed in hemorrhage the kidney is here the kidney vessels are here sometimes they get blocked or uh, because we have to clamp it and so they may have decreased urine output or creatinine will go down no will go up and bun goes up and gfr goes up these are signs of renal insufficiency or renal failure so you check the groin and it you check for hemorrhage and everything. So that's what you're looking for. Then the second one is pause. Look for pauses. Check for pauses. Make sure anybody who go aortic aneurysm, prepare either OP and endovascular, get a vascular and neurovascular check to make sure the graft is working. If there is a decreased pause or no pause or the feet, they are cold. It's supposed to be warm. It means the graft is thrombosed. There's clotting here now. So thrombosis. The doctor needs to know about it so that they can repair them. So that's very important. Okay. So that's the what you do. You check pulses. And then, like I said, you check for hemorrhage. Um, you check the urine uh output for renal function and then you check for you do neurovascular you check their neuro status because of the vascular surgery you make sure they don't have anything that can affect the um in the body especially their brain uh, in stroke and so that's what you need to check post up specifically for endovascular since they go into the groin here you have to check the groin. This is specific. Check the groin. If they're bleeding, you see hematoma in the groin, mostly. That's the first thing you see for endovascular. And you see hematoma. If you see hematoma in the groin, what do you do? Direct pressure. And direct pressure where? Just two centimeters above the incision. So if this is where they make the incision, you just go above it because the vessel is coming down. So you block the vessel from the top, no right where they put the incision. So direct pressure, okay? If you see hematoma, um, just above it. And that's the, the best way. Looking at the groin is for endovascular, uh, for hematoma. But they get it, the same thing. Bleeding, they also have Kellen sign, gray sign, tenor sign ecchymosis in the scrotum, everywhere. Um, you have to check their pulses. Make sure you're checking their pulses, urine output, and everything. The, the, um, the abnormal one, because they have incision in the abdomen, well, you got to check the incision. Make sure there's no infection, sepsis. So be, be sharp. You got to be sharp about it because there may be sepsis there. So you check the abdominal incision, okay? And expect... They are bow sounds to be decreased or none, like one to two days after surgery. Don't be, don't worry about it. This is not, you are not being sharp. Okay, be sharp. Check my prioritization. That is not important. So that's the difference between the two. Um, I made a mistake here. That's the difference between the two. Um, repairs okay so we'll, we'll try and put it together uh, like it's a uh, um, case form and then we can i can summarize everything to you and you see um what it is before i do that Sometimes they, they it's, it's all words. They use words to try to confuse you and see if you are really, really know what you're doing. Um, 
sometimes they put graft leak. It's nothing. Graft leak is nothing. There's nothing there. Basically, if you put a graft, they're talking about endovascular. When the graft it is, when they put it there, it's leaking. So there's bleeding. It just means bleeding. Don't worry about it. There's bleeding into the sac. Graft leak is bleeding. So it's the same thing we talk about. They will have frank pain. They will have ecchymosis. They will have back pain. They will be in shock. So all the symptoms of shock, you just lost them. So that's what you expect. So frank pain, leakage, basically they are bleeding, ecchymosis. So that's what they're trying to confuse you. That's all. Don't fall for it. So let's do some application. So start the question. Which of the following is are consistent with the diagnosis? A 75-year-old male presented to the emergency room with suspected abdominal aortic aneurysm rupture. He has rupture. Which of the following uh, is consistent? So triple A has rupture. So which one is consistent? Open repair require groin incision. So open repair require abdominal incision. No, this is wrong. Assess DPPT pulses after surgery. Yes, it's whether endovascular or open. You see, I did not say anything whether it's endovascular or open. So we're just using our knowledge to answer. Abdominal incision for endovascular repair. No. If he's doing abdominal uh, endovascular repair, there's no abdominal incision. There's groin incision. So this is wrong. This also is wrong. Frank and periambilical ecchymosis indicate bleeding. Yes, that's Kellen and uh, Gray Turner sign. Elevated BUN may be expected after surgery. Yes, they may have. Increase slightly in creatinine BUN urine output because of the clamping of the vessel. And so we check for their urine output. So this is a morphine for back pain after surgery. No, 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 no. Red flag. They present with back pain. Okay. That means they're bleeding. After surgery, there should be no more. No more back pain. This is how the examiner confuse you. Oh, well, he has surgery. You expect him to have back pain. No more back pain. If you have back pain, you're bleeding. And if you're bleeding, it's hemorrhage, which is shock. And if it's in, you are in shock, we got to be, be sharp. And we got to take care of you. So that is wrong. So this is the end of it. Thank you very much for listening. Keep charging. Check my website on YouTube. And if you like um, like this video, comment on it. Take care of yourself. Keep charging.